Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models and today we are reviewing Miniart 38003 German tram car 641. The other name of it is Strassenbahn Triebwagen 641. This is another highly detailed, very accurate kit of a civil vehicle from Miniart containing 625 parts, some of which are cleared and some photo etched too. Everything is enclosed in rather big and crowded box. Besides the model in the box you can find a diorama pad and two poles which serve for electricity transfer for the tram cars. This is the second railway cart released from Miniart following the European tram, their first release of that interesting civil vehicle which was very popular in the 30s all around Europe. First we're gonna start with the instruction sheet which as you might know and older mini art kits start with the decal and painting guide. We have green vehicle with different signs over it and pretty much that is the only option for painting this model. The stations are marked on a rotating information barrel over the tram and they are decals. Mini art made an effort putting a thorough description of the paint options available from different manufacturers. They included Vallejo, Testors, Tamiya, Humbro, Ravel, Mr. Color and Life Color. They also did some optional markings as those here depending on which exact one you want to build. Then the instructions continue with the description of the spruce, the decals, the photo etch, the clear parts and then they start with building of the bottom part of the cart. The build seems relatively complex and definitely not for newbies. There is many small parts that require proper alignment. The bottom of the cart is built from two parts. As you can see there are springs and some other suspension parts included. And those two here are the floor, which is very nicely corrugated and detailed, as you will see in a bit. Next are the windows, the handles, some hinges of the doors. The interior looks very promising. As you can see, some of the parts are really big. However, with 600 plus parts in this model, we can expect a lot of small details. Next thing we should build is the driver's compartment. As you might expect, this is something that you can find on the both sides of the cart. The detail looks very nice and I think this is most interesting part of the vehicle. There are also a lot of clear parts that go there too. And again, some small sub-assemblies like the hinges of the doors and minor details. The doors of the cart themselves seems to be the most challenging part. Also, I need to mention that the whole interior should be painted before closing everything. The ceiling of it is something that intrigues me a lot. Not only that it has very nice detailing, but it also has an infomercials or commercials. Once you paint the interior, they should be placed there as you eventually might have seen in the public transport that you, you are using. This definitely spices up the interior of the tram car. Of course, you gotta prep everything before closing it and build the model inside of the model itself, if I might say so. This includes two driver's compartment, passenger compartment with seats, floor and ceiling with commercials in it. After completing the cart itself, next comes the suspension which is closer to a train than to a vehicle model. Here we have many small parts like the springs, additional details and sub-assemblies, all that you might eventually have seen on the tram in your city. In terms of building, this is probably the most difficult part of the kit. It is a real based vehicle, so you might imagine what you can expect from it. As you can see, the bottom part with the springs itself, it looks like a whole another model. Train modelers here can help a lot with advices and guidance. After finishing that comes the upper part of the tram where the electricity goes into the cart. Everything is positionable, folded or open. The drums pointing the stations are not supposed to be glued and are also there. Very nice way to add a bit of salt to this kit. Then we have many handles on the outside. 
On the next page you can see two types of polls that Miniart provided. They are probably different from standpoint of the era when they were built. Once everything is built we have the base, we have the tram and we have two balls which pretty much completes a full diorama which is crowded into one box. Last page features the cutaways that I mentioned about in the beginning. We have three different types of infomercials. They're positionable on the two sides of the cart and probably they can be mixed together. They feature cigarettes, chocolate, also different style of interior commercials like Coca-Cola, Fanta, skin cream and stuff that was eventually popular during that time. This brings another level of authenticity and life to the kit. Those of you who are using tram carts, even modern ones, should know that this kit can bring along the vibe of the real thing scaled down. Very good job, Mini Art. There are small decals, I believe two options, depending on the cart number, on the sides and in the front, and pretty much that concludes the instruction sheet. The first sprue I'm gonna show you is sprue D. We have two of these in total and some parts of the electrical system, also the info drums and some minor details of the tram car. Clearly molded from grey plastic. The very next one I'm gonna show you is three sprues in one. They are G, GA and GB. Again we have two of these. They include some part of the drivetrain, of the suspension, some rods, the info drums, some long lines and some attachment points. It doesn't look like a tram now, but it will be once it's built. Next sprue is the sprue which holds the wheel, the springs and some intricate parts of the suspension. Very delicate and fine details, you gotta be careful with those. After that comes two sprues, one of which is holding the poles, the other one is holding the electrical transfer system of the cart. As I mentioned we have two options of a pole depending on your personal preference. As you can see both sprues are very nicely molded and everything is realistic to its maximum in that scale. This is sprue B, of this we have again two. It includes the doors, parts of the driver's compartment, highly detailed and clearly molded. Also the benches are here, plus the front and the back walls of the tram car. Once more two of these, sprue C. This includes the doors for the passengers, some of the springs of the suspension, the side doors for the driver's compartment as well as the front of the tram cart with the headlight. Almost no flash and enough detail for a 21st century scale model kit. Next is sprue A, we have two of these again. This is the one that I show you in the beginning of the instruction sheet. It holds the bottom of the interior, the side of the tram car and the hood of it, plus the bumper. Those are the biggest parts featured in that kit. Even with that size though, everything is highly detailed again. No compromises whatsoever from Miniart. Next we have the diorama pad. The diorama pad seems like a vacuum formed one, which is something that I personally hate. However, it is so nicely textured that you cannot have any other choice but to fall in love with it. It seems so realistic that with minor painting capabilities, you'll be able to squeeze out of it maximum realism. It represents the typical pavement of the 30s and adds additional so to the kit. Next we have the decals and the transparent parts. From the bigger clear sprue we have four in total featuring the bigger windows and the headlights. From the other one, the smaller one, we have two. We have windows all over this model and without masking this will be a nightmare for every modeler out there. The decals include the stations, the tram route, some emblems, some technical signs and the numbers of the cart itself. They look nice, although I cannot guarantee about their quality. 
The badges are the thing that I like most because they're colorful and they add vividness to the kit. Well, this is it guys. This is what we have in the box of Mini R38003 German Tram Car 641 Strassenbahn Triebwagen. I find it a very interesting model because it can be part of diorama or a standalone. You just saw why. Thanks to MiniArt for providing me with this kit for review. I hope you enjoy it and find it useful. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe and see you in the next one.